Um, so once you've got it wired up, then the next steps, obviously, to get into the programming to set, to set the thing up, which you're going to see there's a couple ways to do that. Um, just like we had with the sensor naming conventions, the parameters for the setups, very similar with other case controllers as well. The 210 is one that you could kind of compare from that standpoint if you wanted to. Um, so all your parameters are, are kind of grouped by category where we get a, just a letter to kind of indicate what the function is tied to. So something like yeah. R, all your R parameters are going to be your basics, your set points and, and that sort of thing. Uh, C would be anything tied to compressor control if we're controlling a compressor relay on the case controller. D for defrost, uh, F for fans. We have N, which I don't, do you know why we picked the letter N for super heat? I guess S was taken. Yeah. So, but yeah, just keep in mind that anything that starts with N is kind of tied to the injection control. Maybe they went with the last letter instead of the first there. Right. Um, but yeah, things tied to the super heat control of the valve. A for alarming, and then they went with the uh, mysterious letter O for miscellaneous for all the other odds and ends that were controlling um, yeah. rail heat, the DIs, the function there for the DIs and whatnot. Yeah. They kind of separated out the um, set point for the case controller. I think the idea with there was that it would be a little easier to get to than diving in through all your parameters and scrolling. So if you want to just change your set point and make an adjustment there, um, when you're at the case controller, there's three buttons on the right side. You press that middle button and that gets you right into the set point for the case. Uh, we have a, and something else you're going to see across all these different case controllers is something that we refer to as a main switch. And so it, it's not a, a physical switch. It's a kind of a virtual or a programmable switch. That's one of the parameters in the case controller. Um, it's parameter R12, and I think just about anything you'll see except for the 750 that doesn't use those um, menu, the same menu structure. But the main switch is something that starts out of the box in the off state, and there's some kind of main parameters if we're going to make an adjustment to things like refrigerant type or the application that we have to make sure it's in that off state to make those changes. Otherwise, if we want normal operation, we change that, that main switch in the program to an on state to get regulation to occur. And if we don't, then we're going to get an alarm. Um, we're going to get no control out of the valve or any of the other functions, like we said. Um, and it may turn into a call of, hey, this thing's not doing anything. What's going on here? And it's just as simple as changing that switch to an on state. Right. Um, again, programming, so one of the options you have is, is just setting this all up from the buttons right on the front of the controller. There's three buttons just to the right of the display that lets you get into the parameters and, and navigate through them. Um, or, and, and probably easier, and, and a lot of times it's, it's set up this way to take place. The, the, other, end, the other option is in the system manager um, that the 550A is probably going to be tied to. Uh, if the set points are already set up in there, or if you want to set them up in there, you can just download it from the system manager to the case controller once it's online with the system manager. It's pretty quick. I mean, you're talking 10, 15, 20 seconds, as long as there's no communication issues there. Yep. Um, so that's normally the route we see where it's a program that's been set up ahead of time. And once everything's wired up and online, we just download into each case controller individually. Uh, just Again, mentioned it a second ago, but it's worth repeating that when we are, if, if we're going that route, especially of downloading from the system manager, um, because you don't always get the feedback to tell you it didn't happen. But if we don't have the main switch in that off position when we download the settings into the case controller, um, some things just aren't going to get sent down and, and you're going to say, well, I set everything down. I think I'm good to go. Why isn't this working? If that main switch was on when you downloaded, you're not going to get your refrigerant type in there. And that's obviously something that the case controller needs to know when it's trying to calculate its superheat. So just keep that in mind that when you're downloading your settings, you want to make sure that main switch is in the off state, get your settings in there. And then after that's done, go back and change that main switch back to on as your last state or last step to uh, get everything up and running. And then um, one other thing to mention is that if we run into a situation where maybe your, your settings are hosed, you just don't know how this thing's set up, and you think it's just easier to start from scratch as opposed to um, trying to, to get to the bottom of a problem, the case controller does allow you to go back to factory defaults, and you can actually define what those factory defaults are. So just hold top and bottom buttons in on the case controller and, and power cycle it. 
and that will get it back to those factory settings for you to start from scratch. Yep. If you did it right, you should see FAC on the screen yep. right, right after it kicks in. Right. Yep. 